So Steve, take it away. Okay, I want you to look up here and I want you to see something on the screen. Put that up there. Got a little. We had, uh, we have five little black lab puppies. And um, we are looking for homes for them. And uh, they come from wherever that, it's not up there yet. Anyway, River is my lead gun dog that I hunt with. And uh, she had puppies. We sold two. We got three left. And uh, if you're interested, I'm, I'm at table 55. Um, I can give you more information on it. And I have the cutest picture, but um, I guess it didn't quite make it to the big screen yet. Well, while we're waiting on that, there it is. That, that's one of them right there. <laughs> so, uh, so they'll be available. We're actually showing them to those that have purchased them this Thursday. And then they'll be available August 6th. So August 6th is when they're ready to go home. So if you're looking for a, 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 an easy-to-train dog, I mean, both, the lineage of both dogs is uh, state and national champions. Uh, so hunting or just a house dog, they'll, they'll be a quick read. I've always said to people who've asked me, don't get a mutt uh, for a dog. You're going to have it for a dozen years. So get a great dog that trains quickly that you'll love for a dozen years and not hate. We had, I, we've got members of our family that have a dog that jumps up on the counter and eats pies and stuff. That's a, that's a dog that probably needs another home. But um, these, these dogs that come from us will be, will be excellent. So if you're looking for a, a gift or you're looking for a house dog that'll be awesome or a hunting dog, um, we've got three left. So I want to have Steve and Victor stand up. So Steve and Victor are from Cleveland, Tennessee. They started a, a wholehearted men's breakfast at their church. And Victor finished uh, wholehearted 45. First Nigerian. So, so, so Victor is unique in that he's the first, I, I'm assuming he's the first guy in Tennessee that's done wholehearted 45. And he's the first Nigerian, African, that's done whole hard 45. And he just looks great, doesn't he? Look, he's wearing his shirt and everything. So that's awesome. So let's pray for these guys. They have about 15 or 20 guys coming um, in, is it every week, Steve? Yeah, so every week they do this with men and it's starting to grow. So let me extend our hands to these uh, powerful men of God. Father, thank you for Steve and Victor. Thank you for their church in Cleveland, Tennessee. Father, I pray a blessing over that men's group, over that whole church. And I pray, Lord, there be a mighty move of the Spirit among the men there in Cleveland. I pray that there would be a revival that would break out in that town through this church and also through these men in a mighty way. God, may it increase and multiply. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm so excited for you guys. Yeah. I want all of you just to close your eyes, just close your eyes for a moment, and I'm, for the next few weeks, I'm going to talk about a kingdom of God revolution in Colorado Springs in El Paso County, and I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine as best you can what I'm about to say to you. Imagine Colorado Springs as God meant it to be. Imagine a city where the very feeling and the atmosphere is righteousness, peace, and joy. Imagine a city where people celebrate life, think creatively, and dream imaginatively. Imagine a place where you would feel safe on any city street at night. Imagine a city with doctors, hospitals, and clinics that have the conviction that every life is protected and fought for, whether born or unborn. Imagine a city where there's hope in the schools because the kids are excited about their future and desire to dream dreams of changing the world. Imagine teachers in the classrooms who love their students and can't wait to equip them to be world changers. 
Imagine a place where there's prosperity throughout every sphere of influence, whether it's media, government, health care, education, business, military, church, or family. People love what they do and can't wait to bring the kingdom of God into their God calling. Imagine men who love God and others and who are servant leaders at home and at work. Imagine men, mighty men of God, that forgive others who hurt them and work as peacemakers to bring reconciliation all over the city. Imagine a city where the men and the women come together as leaders to work on issues and problems with the goal of prosperity for all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic background. Imagine Colorado Springs being a model city to the rest of the nation. So open your eyes. I believe, and I know it's crazy, but I believe that that's the destiny of this city. I believe that's what God would want. And I believe God's raised up wholehearted men to be a part of a kingdom of God revolution. Not just a revival. Revivals are awesome and they come and go. But a revolution is, is a work of God that touches all facets of a culture and continues year after year to make an impact. Imagine Colorado Springs starting to look a little bit like Zechariah's vision in Zechariah 8. Four and five. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with cane in hand because of their age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. Or Jeremiah's vision. And this was Jeremiah's vision to the Jewish people in exile. In Babylon, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I have carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And men and women, God has given us, at least at the road, and here at Wholehearted Men, a vision for a kingdom of God revolution in our time. Men, revolution is always local. So we can get so fixated on national issues that we forget we have local issues. We can get so fixated on Washington, D.C. that we forget about Colorado Springs. We can get so fixated on a national election when God has given us local elections and local school boards and local schools, and local teachers, and neighbors in our neighborhoods that God's already placed all around us. We don't have to take, buy a ticket. We don't have to get a passport. We can simply walk across to that other yard next door and be the kingdom to the people right there. And I believe God wants to do that in Colorado Springs. So turn in your Bibles to Matthew 4, and this is just an introduction today on a kingdom of God revolution. Next week, we'll keep building for the next few weeks on what I mean as I open up this idea of a kingdom of God revolution. And I love this verse because these are the first words out of Jesus' mouth in his public ministry. Now, you, you may see in Matthew 4 and Matthew 3 a little bit, but in Matthew four seventeen, he's launching out. And if you compare this with the other um, gospels, synoptic gospels, he starts off the same or similar in all of them. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
So when I was a missionary in Japan, I read a, a book. I've now read it, I don't know, five or ten times. And it's by a guy named E. Stanley Jones. Most of you have never heard of him. He's very famous in the 40s and 50s in the United States. He's a Methodist missionary to India. And he wrote this book, The Unshakable Kingdom and the Unchanging Person. The Unshakable Kingdom and the Unchanging Person. And I just got lit on fire. I never lost it. This idea that the kingdom of God was the main message of Jesus. That Jesus was not a preacher, primarily. He was a revolutionary. Jesus was not primarily a moral, life-giving communicator. He was a revolutionary that came to revolutionize planet Earth. And listen, guys, if you think about any great movement in history, any great person in history, they pale compared to the transformation that Jesus Christ brought. So Jesus Christ's primary message, and this is amazing to me, I've been to seminary, I've been to graduate school, I've been all over the world, and hardly anybody brings this up, but the main message of Jesus was the kingdom of God. Jesus did not talk about getting people saved. He talked about seeking first the kingdom of God. And there's a big difference. So Jesus spoke over a hundred times. Write this down. If you're a note taker, write this down. Jesus spoke over 100 times on the kingdom of God. Jesus spoke over 100 times about the kingdom of God. Jesus taught us to seek first the kingdom of God. Not first salvation, but first the kingdom of God. Jesus' greatest sermon was the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is the ethics of the kingdom of God. Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Matthew 13, Jesus spent all of the parables in Matthew 13, one after another, all on what the kingdom of God is like. Jesus was enamored with, constantly communicated from, and believed at the deepest of his own convictions that the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven is the goal of every believer. To bring the kingdom of God. All right, so then you should be asking the question, what's the kingdom of God? So let me give you a definition of the kingdom of God. I'm going to throw a few phrases together. Um, I've got a more concise one that I'll cover in the weeks ahead. But let me just give you some, some different, uh, my perspective on the kingdom of God. Definition of the kingdom of God is a, a kingdom is a domain ruled over by a king. So first of all, a kingdom, king, dome, king, dominion, a king who's ruling over a domain it's not a democracy. You don't get to vote. You don't get to reelect Jesus. He's on the throne. He's at the right hand of the Father, and he's ruling over every dominion, every power, every demon, every cosmic being. And he's ruling over you. And he's ruling over the earth. Now listen, it's important to hear this, what I'm going to say. Just because he's ruling in heaven does not mean he's ruling on earth. Does he have the domain of the earth that he's a king over? Yes. But the jurisdiction of the kingdom, though it be his, can't be ruled through and over but through citizens of the kingdom. That's you and me. So when you see evil in our city, when you see crime in our city, that's not God's fault, that's our fault. In other words, it's when kingdom citizens don't do anything that Satan and demons rule. It's when you acquiesce your responsibilities in your marriage that your marriage falls apart. 
It's because you don't show up on time and work hard at work that you get fired. Don't blame it on Jesus. So listen, this is important. As Jesus rules in heaven, God calls you to rule on earth. The the original mandate of Genesis 1 is that we would take dominion over the earth. God's not taking dominion over the earth. God's looking for citizens of the kingdom who will bring the values of the king into the domain in which we live. I'm not responsible for Nigeria. I'm not responsible for Washington, D.C. I'm not responsible for what's happening in, uh, in the Middle East. I mean, I pray about it and I care about it. But I'm responsible for Colorado Springs. You're responsible for El Paso County. This is our time. This is our place. This is our Samaria, Judea, and remotest parts of the earth. Notice the progression. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Acts 1-8. So even Jesus, in mandating to his disciples, knowing that they're going to go to the world, says, start here. Start in Jerusalem. And they brought a kingdom of God revolution to Jerusalem. And then it spread throughout Asia Minor. You know, it's interesting, you that, were, that are part of the road, you heard me on Sunday, it was more of a, a side, side point that I made, I think in third service, I don't think I made it in the first two, that the pictograph of the kanji, the Chinese kanji, which I had to learn as a missionary in Japan. So I learned three alphabets. I learned hiragana, katakana, and kanji when I was in Japan. Well, kanji are the pictographs, the pictures that you see in Chinese lettering that came over during migration thousands of years ago into Japan that they adopted and adapted to their language. So the pronunciation, though it sometimes is similar, is very different from Japanese, Chinese. But the, but the picture, the, the kanji is the same. And I was, I was noting, because we were talking about the Nephilim, and we were talking about Noah and, and, Christ, and Christ descending into hell and preaching to those spirits in prison that we were in First Peter. That these, these kanji are thousands of years old. And yet, if you look at the kanji for flood, it's a boat with eight people in it. Where did that come from? That's because probably Thomas... So Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. And when he got radically saved and and he was there when Christ ascended to heaven and he heard remotest parts of the earth, he went. And we believe that he took either the Silk Road or one of the main um, trade roads into India and possibly even into China. And so somewhere, that relationship of a kingdom of God revolution through a man named Thomas gave us the Thomas Church of India. Here's my point, that God has given each of you a responsibility to bring a kingdom of God revolution in our time. So a kingdom is a domain ruled over by a king. It's not a democracy. There's one ruler, a king, who leads, guides, and protects the citizens of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the reign and the rule of Christ over his domain. He is the king over his kingdom, and his kingdom begins with him as the king. So what is, and then I'm going to close it up here, what is a kingdom of God revolution? Let me give you a definition. A kingdom of God revolution is the ongoing move of God administered through local churches who are equipping the saints, the citizens of the kingdom, to influence different cultural spheres in a local city, county, and state that brings kingdom transformation. Let me say it again. A kingdom of God revolution is the ongoing move of God. So it's not just an isolated revival. It's an ongoing move of God administered through local churches who are equipping the saints who are the citizens of the kingdom to influence different cultural spheres in a local city, county, and state 
that brings kingdom transformation. So I'm less interested in salvation in someone's life than I am in transformation of their lifestyle. Now, does it begin with salvation? Of course it does. You got to start there. But when you go into, when I do marriage counseling, I don't go into marriage counseling and first thing I say is, so when were you married? Who was the pastor? How many came? Did you have big cake? Did you have an expensive dress? Did you have a really cool honeymoon? That's what we do in the church. We're enamored by salvation decisions. That's just the marriage ceremony, man. We're to make disciples, not make converts. The, 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 the American church has been saved thousands of times over. Everybody in America has gotten saved like four times. And look at our culture. Look at our values. Because the church, and it starts with the pastor, is not discipling people to become disciples. Missional disciples. Disciples on a mission. Can you imagine if 400 guys get this? If you, and, and a lot of you already get it because you're here, because you get it. But if all of us really, really got it, and we just decided today, I'm going to be a kingdom citizen today. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to be the kingdom. It does not mean getting on a soapbox and preaching at work. I'm not saying that. I don't even think that's smart. We're, we're, I, think, I think the kingdom is all, read Matthew 13. We'll cover it later. But Matthew 13 the essence of Matthew 13 is the subliminal message of the kingdom. In other words, it's hidden. It's kind of hidden. It's the yeast. And then it gradually takes over. It gradually takes It's in secret. And then it gradually takes over. Because the nature of the kingdom of God is always multiplication. It starts to pervade everything and take over. So think about it if today, as you guys leave today, you just decide, I'm going to be a kingdom citizen. I got a king. I got a king ruling my life. I'm going to, I'm going to puff my chest out. I'm going to hold my head up. And I'm going to walk with the confidence of the king. And I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring the king into my domain. That's a revolution, man. And you just bring the king in. And that means that when there's an argument at work, you become a peacemaker. That means when someone stabs you in the back, you forgive them. Now, you don't need to trust them, but you forgive them. That you become savvy at work. You, you, use, you, you use the mind of Christ to figure out problems. You've got the mind of Christ. You've got a leg up on everybody else. Because you got the mind of Christ. In other words, you have spiritual gifts, natural talents, and acquired skills. So just because you have spiritual gifts and natural talents does not mean you don't have and don't work hard on acquired skills. You go to school. You, you listen to podcasts. You keep learning. You keep growing because you have the mind of Christ. And some Christians can be the laziest people. Because they're like, well, you know, it's all going to hell, man. You know, last days. I remember my brother, we were doing, um, we were doing a whole heart advance in Georgia. And my brother's a pastor was it, with his church and everything. And he would come up to me and he'd tell me about some problem with some guy and everything. And I would just look at him and I'd go, And he go, what? I said, last day. So I was being facetious. But that's the way we are. It's last days. Well, it might be the last days. Here's what I do know. It's your last days. 
and it's more my laster days than it was 10 years ago, okay? So I treat it that way for sure. I think there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, don't acquiesce to a last day's mentality when God wants us to build something that will last for the next 200 years. Don't you build differently? Don't you build differently? If you have a, if you have a 57 Chevy and you've got grandchildren and you want to give it to them as an inheritance, don't you work hard at making that thing beautiful? Or if it's a 57 Chevy that you're going to put in the demolition derby? Don't you build a little bit different? Let's build a church. Let's build wholehearted men. Let's build your church, wherever you're from, so that it will last for 200 years if the Lord tarries. That's the mentality God wants us to have. And that's what Jesus came preaching. That's a kingdom of God revolution. Isn't that exciting? I mean, that gets me up in the morning. I do wholehearted 45, Victor. Because of a kingdom of God revolution. I want to stay in good shape because I want to be in good shape for a kingdom of God revolution. I'm going to be dragging around because I'm all drugged up. Because of all the crap I eat and all the stupid decisions that I make. Man, I want to be an athlete for God. I want to see God use me until the very, very last day. And then, man, just boom, I'm dead. I'm in heaven. That's great. That's awesome. All right, so you got a few questions. Let me pray for you, and we'll, we'll get to part two next week. So, God, thank you for today. Thank you for these men. Thank you that they are wholehearted and that we're all on a journey. Nobody's arrived here. Nobody's got their act together perfectly. But that, Lord, you inspire us, encourage us, and fill us to be kingdom of God revolutionaries, and we're citizens of the kingdom. So God, today, I pray that each man here would walk out with a new confidence and a new passion to bring the king wherever they go and be the kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Live free. Live free. So such a good word, Steve.